Senor Ballard. I, I'm Sam Donaldson of American Television, ABC News. Yes, but what do you know? What, what do you want? Well, is, is your name Reinhard Kops? Excuse me, but I have no time for such well, things. Uh, did you help people escape here to Argentina from no, Rome? No, and the contrary. So your name uh, is not Reinhard Kops? No. This is not a uh, photostat of your membership in the Nazi party? No, never. I'd been a member of... Uh, on the contrary, I tell you, if they wanted to kill me, I had to flee the Nazis because I saved 25 Jews from going to, Aus to Auschwitz. But thanks to Rick Eaton's undercover work, we had a snapshot of a picture hanging in Juan Mahler's living room of a young officer being sworn into the German army that looked very much like a young Reinhard Kops. And we had a copy of Kops' Nazi party card and showed it to him. Confronted with this, the cover story cracked. You are Reinhard Kops? No, no. No? No. I was. I was in... Uh, in... Uh, when was it? 52. The German embassy here gave me the name. The name of? Of Mahler. Mahler. <laughs> Mahler. Then what was your name before Mahler? Cops. Cops. Your name was Cops. Yeah. No, is not. He was. It's such a great difference. It, oh, it was Cops. Yes, yes. Having admitted who he was, would he now admit what he had done? Have you ever heard of the rat line? Something called the rat line? No, 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 no. But when we played Cops a tape Rick Eaton had made of a conversation between the two of them in which Cops admitted that he had in fact helped Bishop Udall run the rat line... You work in the, for the Vatican? For the Vatican, yes. He remembered that also. I had to tell him this man had been that, that, that. And this man is not here because he killed people at Sidon. If I, I, but have... the bishop was the one who helped organize this system whereby Nazi war criminals came to Argentina. Yes, I, yes, I know, him. I know now that it was something like that. But in those times, I did not know. But why would Cops himself need to disappear to Argentina under a false name? There is some evidence that by the end of the war, he was commander of an intelligence unit in Yugoslavia, which had the job of eliminating anti-Nazi partisans. I was not in, in Yugoslavia, Albania, in the SS. Clearly, Cops gives up his secrets only grudgingly. But watch how he treats others' secrets. There's a lot of people here still Nazi. A lot, I tell you. Who are they? Cops pulled us a few feet up the sidewalk and turned his back on the cameras and told us what we wanted to know. His name is Kripke, P-R-I-P-K-E, Erich Kripke. Actually, we already knew about Kripke. We had him under surveillance. He's the man in the restaurant wearing the yellow sweater. We knew he was part of a shocking story. But would he admit to it? Senor Kripke, Sam Donaldson of American Television. Yes. Senor Kripke, yes. Can we talk to you for just a moment? Yes. A thousand miles south of Buenos Aires, in the shadow of the Andes Mountains, lies a little piece of Germany. Bariloche, Argentina, feels like it belongs in Bavaria. And that's no accident, because many Germans moved here after World War II. One of them was Erich Pripka, once a captain in the dreaded Nazi SS, now an 80-year-old grandfather. Uh, you were in the Gestapo in 1944, were you not? In Rome? Yes, in Rome, yes. How do you feel about the Nazi party now? No, I'm glad that it's over. I finished with the Nazis at 45, you see. Today, Eric Pripka lives quietly. He is prominent in the German community in Baraloci, chairman of the Cultural Association. He is soft-spoken and kindly-looking. But what was he like back then? What kind of a man was Kripke? Well, to get a little more insight on that, all you have to do is visit the Museum for the Liberation of Rome here on the Via Tasso. You see, this building used to be the Gestapo Interrogation Center, and it was here that Eric Kripke did some of his cruelest work. Elvira Sabatini is the curator of this museum. In 1944, her husband was picked up and locked in this tiny cell for a month. He thought he was going to die and scratched his will on the plaster wall. He almost did die. Your husband was tortured here? Yes, many times. By Kapler and by Pribke. Pribke? Pribke too, yes. He hit him often with brass knuckles. 
He was very controlled, very cold. Peter Tompkins, the American spy posing as an Italian, actually met Pripka at a party. He was charming, uh, cold, uh, personable, good-looking, impeccably uniformed. Capable of murder? He, he's involved in, in the massacre three days later. He, 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 he was in the Ardiatin caves butchering 335 people. These are the Ardiatin caves of Rome, today a memorial, complete with rows and rows of coffins. On March 24, 1944, a place of mass murder. Piera and Vera Simoni, sisters now in their 70s, come here often to remember what happened here to their father. And then over here, the bodies were stacked? All this, yes. Did you find your father here? Yes. They, the workmen found. And had been shot. And yes. that has been shot. This was what it looked like when the Allies, who had pushed the Germans out of Rome, found the bodies three months later. How many bodies? 335. All civilians. The prisoners were brought there in trucks with their hands tied behind their backs. Peter Tompkins also has a reason to visit the caves. Back in 1944, he was a U.S. spy working undercover in Rome. Among the victims of the massacre were 22 of his Italian agents. He attended their autopsies. And then they were taken in five at a time where Kaplas, NCOs, and officers shot each one in the back of the neck uh, with one shot and made them kneel, made the next successive five kneel on top of the others so the corpses accumulated, which is, it, it, it's a scene so horrifying, it, it's hard to believe. Herbert Kapler, a lieutenant colonel, was the Gestapo chief in Rome, assigned to carry out the massacre. Eric Pribka, a captain, was Kapler's second in command, according to this U.S. intelligence report obtained by Prime Time. After the war, Kapler was convicted and sentenced to life in prison. Pripka escaped from a prisoner of war camp in 1946 and disappeared until we found him in Argentina just a month ago. Surprisingly, perhaps, he told us at least part of the story of the massacre of Rome. You know the, the communists blow up the, uh, a group of our uh, German soldiers. Yes. For every German soldier, ten, ten Italians had to die. Civilians. Well, civilians, they have been, no, they have been morally uh, terrorists. But children were killed. No, not a boy. 14-year-old no. boys were no. killed. No, no, no. In fact, a 14-year-old and two 15-year-olds were shot that day. Men in their 70s shot that day. A priest shot that day. And of the 335 victims, 70 were Jewish. All the family of my mother. All the family? Oh, yes. Seven person of the same family, three generation in the same day. Giulia Spizzuccino's family was Jewish. Her grandfather and 26 members of his family were killed by the Nazis. Eighteen women and children were loaded aboard trains and sent to Auschwitz. And when they arrived, immediately after nine days, they went to the gas chambers. No one of them returned. And the men? The seven men were killed to the cave Ardiatine. 